In this video, I'm going to explain how to use index and match instead of VLOOKUP. So in this video, you will learn why we would use index and match instead of VLOOKUP. I'll then explain the match function by itself. I'll also explain the index function by itself. Then we'll bring it all together to write index and match formulas that can be used instead of VLOOKUP. And finally, I'll explain the most common error you'll encounter with index match and how to fix it. So we're first going to take a look at the benefits of using index and match instead of VLOOKUP. And this Excel file I'm using, I'll make this available for free download. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. And I highly recommend and encourage you to not just follow along, but also practice these techniques. So one of the first major benefits of index and match is that it can look to the left. So VLOOKUP, we're kind of stuck only being able to do a lookup to the a column to the right of the lookup value. But with index and match, we can actually look up and return a value in a column to the left of the lookup value. And then another benefit is that we can specify a single column that contains the return values. Like you see in this diagram here, we can just specify one single column. With VLOOKUP, we need to specify the entire table array. And as you might know, if you insert or delete columns, that can break your VLOOKUP. And I have a few examples of this here. So the first one on this VLOOKUP breaks tab, if we, uh, we have a VLOOKUP, simple VLOOKUP formula here that we wrote in the first video. If we were to insert a column here, I'll just go to column C, select it. I'm gonna hit Control plus on the keyboard to insert a column or right click insert, you can see that my VLOOKUP formula breaks. And that's begin, again, because I'm specifying the third column here as the column index number, and that column is now blank. And then we can also, uh, we cannot use VLOOKUP to look to the left. So in this example here, I wanna look up this name in this column here, and then return the region from column A, a column to the left. And unfortunately, we cannot use VLOOKUP to do that but we can use index and match. So we're first going to look at the match function. Now the match function is very similar to VLOOKUP. It performs the same basic lookup. The only real difference is that VLOOKUP is going to return a value from a cell and match will return a column or row number. I have Excel's definition with the arguments here, and then a simple definition, uh, just like I have for the VLOOKUP, with just what these arguments mean, the what, the where, and the closest match. So let's jump over to this match example sheet, and we'll write out a match formula. So we're going to start in cell C14. I'm gonna type equals, and then start typing the word match, and you'll see that uh, is right here. We can tab into that. Now again, match just has three arguments instead of four, like VLOOKUP. Uh, the first is the lookup value. So this is the same as VLOOKUP. We're going to specify a value. We could specify that with text in quotes, or we could just select a cell that contains the text or the lookup value. So we have that there. Then we're going to type a comma. The next argument is the lookup array. And again, this will be similar to the VLOOKUP with the table array except that we're just going to specify either one column or one single row. So here I'm just going to select this, this column that contains the items that we want to look up, because again, we're looking up this value in this column right here. And so that's all we need for the lookup array. Of course, we'll hit F4 to anchor it. It's still good practice to anchor or make this an absolute reference. Then we'll type a comma. And the last argument is the match type. So this again is similar to VLOOKUP, uh, where we have an exact match, or we have options for approximate matches here for less than or greater than. But in this case, we're going to use the exact match. So we're going to specify a zero. You can either select this and tab into it, or you can just type a zero here for the last argument. Then we're going to close the parentheses and hit enter. And we'll see that we have a four returned here. So this is the row number where the match function has found Cafe Mocha. It's looked in this list. Again, I'll hit F2 here. It's looking in this list or this column right here that we specified, and it finds it in the fourth row of that column. Again, this is not the fourth row of the sheet. It's relative to the lookup array. So it's the fourth row in the lookup array here, finds Cafe Mocha, we'll hit enter, and that's what we have returned right here. 
So match on its own isn't too useful for us. If we wanted to return a price, we'll need to combine it with the index function in order to do that. Before we do that, I'm going to jump to this match column sheet. I just also wanted to explain that we can use match to return a column number as well. So in this formula here, if we edit this formula, it's doing a similar process of finding this lookup value, which is now grande, uh, in this range here, in this row, C3 to E3, which is right up here, and then it's going to return the column number within that range or within that row there. Again, it's relative, so if we hit enter now, we're going to get a two that's returned here for grande because that's the second column in that range. So we can use it to either return a row number or a column number. Again, the important thing to note there is that within this lookup array, we're only specifying a single row or a single column. And then we can combine it with the index function to actually return a value from a cell. So now let's take a look at the index function. And the index function, again, is used to return a cell's value. And this is going to be based on the intersection of the row and column numbers of a range. So here's Excel's definition. And then again, I have this cheat sheet for you with just my simple definition of these three arguments for the index function. So let's jump over to this index example sheet, and we'll take a look at an example. So in cell C14, I'm going to start typing our formula. We'll put equals and then start typing index and we can tab into this. Now when we tab into index, you'll see we get two options here. And we're really just going to worry about this first option which is has these three arguments for the array, the row number and the column number. We don't need to do anything at all to specify that we're using the first option. Uh, Excel will automatically figure that out for us. So it's just good to know that we're really focused on this version of index with these three functions. I'm sorry, these three arguments right here. So the first thing we're going to do, let's say we wanted to return a price for our cafe mocha from our table. We're just going to specify the array, which is the range of values where we want to return a single cell's value from. So we're going to specify this range right here. Again, it's a good habit to anchor this or make it an absolute reference. So this would kind of be similar to the table array in a VLOOKUP. These are all the prices all the possible values that we want to return. And then for the next argument, we have the row number. So I'm going to type a comma. And for our row number, for right now, we're just going to type it in manually. And we want the fourth row. Again, we want Cafe Mocha. So down one, two, three, four rows. So we're going to type the uh, four there for the fourth row, comma. And then our column number will be the second column. Because again, first column for tall, second column for grande. So we'll type a two here. And then we're going to close the parentheses uh, for the index function and we'll hit enter. And we can see that we get the price returned of 395. Now, when we're using the index function in place of VLOOKUP, we actually don't need to specify the column number. So I'll uh, do an example right here. Again, equals index tab into that. For this, our array can just be a single column. So if we just want to return the price of a grande, say grande, we can actually just reference this single column right here. Again, F4 to anchor it. Then we'll type a comma. And you'll notice that only the row number is the required argument here. Since the column number is in square brackets there, that means it's optional and we don't have to specify it. So here we can just type a four and then close the parentheses. We only need that, those two arguments and hit enter and we'll still get the same result of 395. So that's an example of the index function by itself. Again, it's really just a container to point to a specific cell and return its value. Once we combine it with match, that's when it becomes powerful and a powerful alternative to something like VLOOKUP. So now we'll take a look at how to combine index and match to use instead of VLOOKUP. I'm on the index match example sheet. And here we're going to write a formula, an index match formula, to return the price of the Cafe Mocha size grande. So in order to do this, and I have a cheat sheet down here as well of how I typically write out index match formulas to make it a little easier because the formulas can get a little bit complex. So we'll first start with our equal sign, then we'll type index, tab into that. Our array for this example is just going to be the column for the size grande. We can just reference this column here. Again, F4 to anchor that. Then we're going to type a comma and now for our row number, we're going to use the match function. So we'll start typing match, tab into that. 
Our lookup value in this case is going to be our cafe mocha. So we'll select cell B12. Then we'll type a comma here. And the lookup array is going to be the items here in column B. So we'll just select those. And then again, F4 to make that an absolute reference, comma. Then we're going to type a zero for exact match. And then we'll close the parentheses on our match function. And again, we only need these two arguments for the index function, which are the row number, which is our match function here, and the array. So we can now close the parentheses on our index function as well and go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see we get the correct result of 395. So again, if we just step in and look at this, the match function is really doing the work of the lookup, uh, the VLOOKUP here in place of the VLOOKUP to return the row number for the item. It's actually looking up the item here in column B. And then the index function is saying, okay, now that we have that number, number four, we want to return the value from row four in this range here in column D. So just going down to the fourth row there and returning that price of 395. So the major benefit again here between index match and VLOOKUP, if we go over to this sheet, is that we can insert columns. So if we just go right here before column D or select column D, control plus to insert a column, we can see that our index match function right here still works, still returning the result of 395 because even as we insert columns, we can insert as many columns as we want. These range references will still stay the same. And even though they're made absolute references, as we insert columns between them, the references will still change and they'll still remain. Uh, so this will still stick to the grande column here. If we were to delete columns, the same thing would happen. Now that's not necessarily the case with our VLOOKUP. Uh, right here now with our VLOOKUP, we're specifying row, th I'm sorry, column three is the index number. And that column is now blank within the table array. So this is where index and match wins uh, because it requires less maintenance. We don't have to worry about maintaining the formula if we insert or delete columns within our source table up here. We can absolutely do that and index and match will still work. And the other benefit is that we can also use index match to look up to the left. And that's what I have in this example here. So for this formula, again, we have the match function that's looking up this name in column C, and then it finds the matching row number, and it's just returning that to the index function. And in this case, the array for the index function is column A. So we're technically returning a value to the left of the lookup value. We cannot do this with VLOOKUP. However, we can do this with index match because there are two different ranges here that we're referencing. The array and the index is one range, and then the match where we're doing the lookup is in a separate range within the match function. So instead of having to modify your spreadsheet to move columns around to do a VLOOKUP, you can just use this technique with index match instead. And I also wanted to show that we can use index match for both the row and column numbers. So in this example here, uh, we have a, the similar formula, but you could see we're using the match function twice. We're first using it for the row number. That's going to return the row number of uh, size cafe mocha from column B. And then we're using the match function again for the column number. And in this case, we're looking up the size in row three right here and returning that column number. So that's going to return a two to our index function. And then for the index functions array range, we're just referencing all of the cells within the price table here. So all of these cells uh, between these uh, header rows and columns. And so this looks like a long, scary formula, but when you break it down, it's really just two lookups and then the range for the index, that array. And when we hit enter, this is going to return that price. I've also turned this into a bit of a price calculator by adding drop downs for each of these items. So we can choose the item here if you want. Also go over here and choose the size. And then the uh, index match function will of course automatically recalculate to show that price. So this is another solution that can really make your formulas more flexible and dynamic. For example, we could add a column here, just control plus again, if we wanted to add a new size, we could do that right here and fill it with prices and the index match function is still going to work. It's just going to uh, eventually find this new size here, whatever we specify it as, 
and the prices. And once we change our size uh, choice or selection over here, it will automatically all work to return the correct price. So I challenge you to do that. Go ahead and insert a few columns here, make up some sizes and prices, and just see how that will work with the calculation. So let's now take a look at the most common error with index match. And it's actually this ref error. I'm on the most common error sheet. And in cell C12, we have an index match formula and it's returning a ref error. And this is because the ranges are different sizes. So you can see our array range here only goes down to row seven, to cell D7. However, the match function is going down to cell B8. And this value that we're looking up in column B is in fact in cell B8. So it's at the bottom there. So therefore the match function is going to return a five as our row number here. This will return a five. However, we only have four rows specified in the array. So therefore this is going to return a ref error. This would be similar to a VLOOKUP where you specify the column index number that's outside of the table array. So this is a pretty simple example and it's pretty easy to spot this mismatch here. Where this tends to happen a lot in the real world is when we're working with larger data sets. In this uh, sales data sheet, I'm trying to return the region using an index match formula here from this region sheet. And this is a longer table over here. And what happens sometimes is when you're typing out the formula or writing the formula and you're using uh, keyboard shortcuts, if you use control shift down arrow here, to select this range, that's only going to go down to row 26 uh, because there's a blank cell here. So if you use that keyboard shortcut and you're selecting your ranges, uh, you might only get to row 26 or whatever this row is before the blank, and that's not going to select the entire column of data. And that's exactly what's happened here in this particular formula. You can see this is only going to row 26 here. However, the match function, the lookup array and the match function is going all the way down to row 52. So we have a mismatch here and that is what's causing our error. So again, we need to change this to row 52. Now, one good workaround for this to just prevent this error altogether is to use Excel tables. And I have a column here where I have the same formula. However, I am using an Excel table for the lookup table, and you can see here are the table references. So this is referencing table two, and then the entire region column. And same here, we're referencing table two and the entire state code column. And this is on the region table sheet. So those references will reference the entire columns regardless if there's blank cells or not. It's always going to reference the entire column. Even if you add or delete rows, it will still reference the entire column and then that will help prevent that ref error in your index match formulas. And I have a whole nother video that explains Excel tables in more detail, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. But ref errors can definitely be frustrating, so hopefully that helps you figure those out. Now you can also use the if error function here. You can wrap index match in the if error function, just like we saw in the last video with VLOOKUP. It's the same technique of wrapping it in if error, and then out at the end, you can do comma and whatever you wanna put there for an error. But again, those same rules apply here. You just don't wanna wrap every single index match formula in if error first. You first wanna figure out what's causing the error. If you're okay with those errors, then wrap it in the if error to handle them. So I hope you enjoyed that training on using index match as an alternative to VLOOKUP. We also have more in-depth training on index match formulas in our Elevate Excel training program. I should note that the new XLOOKUP function can also be used as an alternative to either VLOOKUP or index match if you're on a version of Excel that supports it. I have a separate video on XLOOKUP and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So I'd like to know what you plan to use index match for now that you know how to use it. So please leave a comment below with your answer. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.